What's happening, my brothers? We're going to make another movie tonight. Um, I've got an interesting story to tell you. It's Christmas. I've been at work about 13 hours, and um, as you guys know, I'm the guy who discovered or created StoneAdvice.com. I run a stone shop up in Oregon called Stoneworks of Oregon. We make granite kitchens and all kinds of other cool stuff out of rock, and I love sharing great ideas. I want to also announce a new company that I just started called Advanced Fabrication Solution. We're going to be providing um, machinery, software, and all the things that you need to run a digitally integrated shop. This doesn't officially start until 1 January. Um, I've actually become the West Coast distributor for Northwood, and today I had an interest, or yesterday I had something very interesting occur. A guy from uh, Medford came up and said, Mark, I want to come up to your shop, and I want to check out your CNC machines. And I said, man, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, man. This guy's coming up from Medford wants to look at my machine. Well, he shows up. I said, hey, by the way, it's not official till 1 January, but if you like the machine, I'd be happy to sell you one. And this guy says to me, he says, well, Mark, you know, I'm looking at the Northwood. I like your machine. You know, I've been going to the website for a long time. And what I really want to do is use the CNC to cut slabs and then process them so I don't have to buy a saw. Well, this is a little lesson in the curse of knowledge. It's a little lesson in sales and it's a little lesson in hubris. See, I'm sitting here in my shop running a saw jet and a CNC and doing mad production and cranking out tons of kitchen. I looked at this guy and said, man, I'm thinking to myself, are you on crack? I didn't say that because he's interested in buying a machine. I didn't want to offend him, but I, I, I said, man, dude, you're nuts. What, what, what do you mean you want to cut slabs on your CNC? And he says, but Mark, these guys, you know, it, it's possible there's some guy in Norway doing it. He posted about it on Stone Advice. And I said, you know, Okay, whatever, dude. I mean, I would just keep, keep cutting parts, keep that spindle going, and keep making money. And so I spent the day with him. He looked at the machine, loved it. I sent him a quote. Everything was good. And then the next day I called him up. I said, hey, you know, how'd it go? You got any questions? I sent you the quote. He says, well, we're looking to get this machine from another company because they told me that I could cut up slabs on my CNC. And I said, well, dude, you can cut up slabs on any CNC, but it doesn't make sense. And he goes, well, Mark, you know, I, I think it is doable, blah, blah, blah. And so I hung up the phone and I sat there and I went, you know, that's a bummer. First customer I've ever had, and I didn't listen to his needs. His needs was he wanted to cut slabs on a CNC. And I, being arrogant and running this big fancy shop with all this high tech gear, was trying to teach him my way of doing things. And what was interesting is after I hung up the phone and thinking about, man, I just lost my first sale because I didn't listen to the customer needs and I didn't think outside the box. After I hung up the phone, I got kind of aggravated. I came down to my computer and I ran some simulations. I said, how would I do this if I was going to actually cut a slab on my CNC? So I started thinking about it, and I, I gamed it out, and this was about two hours ago, and it frustrated me. You know, it's like, well, if you can do it on any, on, on my C, on, on his CNC, you can do it on my CNC, but how would you do this, and how does it make sense? So I ran some simulations, and surprisingly, I figured out that we could actually do it. And then I said, you know, I'm working a night shift tonight. I'm running two centimeter new Venetian gold, flat polish only. I'm not going to CNC the parts, but what a... I couldn't think of a better thing to sample this system on than two centimeter, two centimeter new Venetian gold. I figured if I blew the kitchen up, at least it's not expensive slabs. So tonight, we are actually going to cut up a full slab on a CNC as a viability study. If this doesn't work, you won't be watching this video. So let's take a look at what we're going to do today. Right here on the screen, we've got two parts. Um, we went ahead and digitized them on the digitizing board. If you look behind me over here, you can actually see the parts we're going to cut. That's a, a TTI digitizing board from Chris Cheney. It's a great way to digitize stick templates. This is an outfab job that we're doing for someone else. And um, we're going to go ahead and, and go through the process of actually cutting a full slab on a CNC. So we've digitized the parts and we've brought them in. There's a couple things we have to do to the geometry of these parts. One of the drawbacks to cutting on a CNC versus a water jet is you can't do an inside 90. The tool is approximately 26 millimeters in diameter, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fillet radius those corners to 0.75. And what that's going to do is create a tool path that that tool can follow and, and realistically make. We'll go, by, we'll go back afterwards with a grinder and make that corner square. And we've got another one of those right here. Now, the next thing that you're going to have to do when you're processing a slab is remember slabs are going to go into the machine upside down. Whenever we digitize a part, whether it's with the pro liner, with stick templates, or a laser, or whatever, we always put an F on the part. That lets us know if the parts have been flipped. Since we're going to process the parts, the first thing we're going to have to do is flip them. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to mirror those parts. 
So now we've flipped them. The next thing we do is we have to actually create a slab to put the parts on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool right here, which is to make a rectangle. And the slab is 116 inches, 0.5 by 71 inches tall. And now we've created the slab that we're going to be inserting into the CNC machine. The next thing we have to do is position the parts on the slab. And as I was thinking about this, one of the things that you would have to do if you were processing these parts is you have to actually punch a hole for the finger bit to go into to go around. But after I started thinking about that, I figured as long as it wasn't an issue, in the case of New Venetian Gold, it's not, I could nest these parts right up to the edge of the slab and actually have the finger bit enter from the outside of the slab. Now, as you can see, this is a big slab and these are some big parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snug them up to the perimeter of the slab. Now, this is probably a little bit boring to watch because I'm doing it in real time, but I want you to see what's, what it entails to actually do this process on a CNC. I've never done this before. I've never practiced this before. This is the first time I've done it in real time. So now I'm nesting these to the perimeter of the slab. There's a couple advantages to doing that. One of the advantages is, is that any time that the finger bit any time that the finger bit is not cutting through a complete hog, it can actually travel a little bit faster. I'm going to ride the knob on this. What I mean by ride the knob is I'm going to sit there and control the feed rate while this cuts because I've never done this before and it makes me nervous. So now we've got the parts positioned on the slabs. If you were using Sakuro or Delicatas or something where seam placement and movement mattered, you'd have to actually measure the outside of the slab and what you would do is say you wanted to place that slab in this specific location, it was 35 inches in, you would simply come over here, offset this line by say, or whatever, 35 inches. If I wanted to position that part 35 inches by 40 inches from the corner, or say 25 inches from the corner of the slab, I would simply make some offset lines and then I could actually move the part to that crosshair to create a precision insertion. We don't need to do that with this slab because there's no movement and we're not sweating that. So I'm going to delete these stadia lines. I'm going to zoom in. Everything looks good. The parts are prepped. They've got all the right radius work on them. So now we've got the slab. The next thing we want to do is insert the template of the CNC machine. This is the actual bed of the machine. Now this is pre-set up for pins and it's got a bunch of other data on there that I don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all that right now just to get it out of our face. So right now the slab is sitting at zero, 00 on the CNC machine. I'm actually going to come in here and position this slab in the center of the processing box of my CNC. About like that. Now, as you can see on the computer screen, we've got a series of pods. We've got the slab and the parts drawn on the slab positioned in the machine. So the next thing we have to do is actually place the pods onto the geometry. Now we've got some interesting challenges. We want to support the parts. The finger bit's going to come in and make the cut, but we've got all this fall off that would fall through onto the deck of the machine, so we have to actually support this entire piece with pods. Let's take a look at how we would do that. So we're going to come in here, and we're just going to grab some pods and just simply support the part. Now I have a total of 16 200 by 300, so I can't go hog wild with this. Now I'm not going to be machining the parts in this configuration. My intention is to actually cut the parts and pull them off the machine. In most cases, that's probably what you would wind up having to do. It's hypothetically possible that if I actually position the pods correctly, I could then come in and tool pad it, or I could remove all the junk, all the fall off, and then actually machine these parts in place. Since we're doing a two centimeter flat polish, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to simply cut them out on the machine and have my boys polish them by hand. So I'm going to position a few more pods, just enough to support the parts. So that's enough to hold the parts up. Now I'm going to position a few part pods strategically just to keep the remnants from falling onto the floor. I'm going to go ahead and use a small square pod down here to catch that remnant.